G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. I have something exciting to share with you today. I've made myself a sea foam or lacing mold. Look, that's it there. I did um, make one the other day and uh, I demolded it. But I've got one sitting here that I haven't demolded yet. Now, the reason why I decided to make my own one is because I bought this one. You know how I'm sure a lot of you have seen this one, which is very nice, but like, what do you do with it? It's, it's really small. My square coasters are bigger than that. I cut it into, like I, I cut it around the corners to make a circle. And this is the smallest coaster mold I've got. And it still doesn't fill up the whole thing. So, I mean, it, it touches there, but, so I thought, well, what do you, well, you know, what do you do with it? <laughs> so anyway, that's why I decided to make my own. Izzy, stop barking, please. I'm trying to make a video. So, this is my four round coaster mold, 12 centimeters across. When you get, when you use this mold, um, I've specifically made, made it so that it fits into my four coaster mold if you've got one that's a little bit smaller you can just cut this a bit smaller see that's it there I've cut the edges out off it but um, it, it's only two mil thick so it's pretty easy to to just cut down I'm just gonna put that in there but anyway let's demold this one and I'll show you what I'm talking about so just loosen it all the way look at that actually I'll do it over here so you can see it against the the gray background so you can see what I'm doing just be gentle with it. I mean, it is only two mil, two millimeters. Um, I didn't want to make it too, too thin and flimsy, so I have made it a little bit thicker than those other ones that you can buy. That's it there. <laughs> now it's got all these little dots of resin that are sitting on top. They're easy enough just to pick off, but I don't think I'll bother. I think I'll just pour straight into that again because I, you know, I only want the resin to go into the grooves there. I don't mind if it sits on the top. But I mean, if you're pretty pedantic about it and you want to pick them all off, you can, but it's, it's quite an effort. Right, so those are the two moulds. Now, this is what you have left. And um, push that through there. Now, I wanna, I'm going to come up behind you so that I can show you a couple of little things. Put you on autofocus. Now, this is... This is the top that I poured on. There's a tiny little bubble. Excuse my cut finger. I don't know if you can see. There's a little, tiny little bubble there. Um, sometimes because the little bubbles are quite small, you may get a little piece, you know, that hasn't, like, hasn't gone into the hole all the way. This one's really good. I don't see anywhere I've kind of missed it. I am going to pour into these two again and I'll show you how I did it. Um, but if you, if you, you know, maybe don't push the resin down enough, you, I think you do really need to use a thin resin on this one to get into all the little holes. That would be much easier than a thicker one. But if you haven't and you've missed a couple of holes, just flip it over and the, the other side will be absolutely perfect because you won't see any See the bubbles on this side? See that little bubble there? Just flip it over. Right, so that's the side I'm going to use. And it's nice and shiny. So at the moment, it's too big to fit into that. But you don't want that rim around the outside anyway on your finished coaster. So all we do is get some little scissors and you just snip all the way around Try and get as close to that little edge as possible. So it's really easy to cut. And this is what I'm saying, like if your coaster, maybe your mold isn't this particular one, like you don't have to go out and buy my mold. I mean, I would appreciate it, but you don't have to. You can use a, a smaller mold. Um, and maybe you would want to then maybe mark, maybe put your coaster, if you've already got one, on there. And then mark around it and then cut so that it's... Um, a little bit small. I'm just having a look to see what I've got that's a little bit smaller. Oh, 
is this tiny it's a little tiny one look at that but I mean if you wanted to you just put that in the middle um, mark around it and then cut it or you might want to you might want to do a square you know you could do a square but you just get a, a, a previously made coaster mark around it and then cut it but for today I'm just following this edge here that I've made specifically for these but I mean a lot of you have already got my mold so and thank you appreciate it <laughs> appreciate the support <laughs> uh, so if you've already got this mold yay for you it will work on the regular mold and it'll also work on the deep mold the deeper one so there you go cut that off don't need that uh, that was pretty easy wasn't it and then that just fits straight into there like that look at that fits like a glove I'm gonna do these other two um, and then we're gonna go and do a, a beach pour so what I'll do is I'll mix up my sand in some resin and I'll put it down the bottom there um, this I will kind of um, well I'm not going to do it now but because I kind of want you could cut it really if you wanted to um, or you could just sort of dig that under the sand depending on what you wanted to do but I may actually just have a think about how I'm going to do this I'm going to put the sand down first and then put the dark blue and the lighter blue down and then once that's kind of set up a little bit a bit tacky then you would put your bubbles or sea foam on top um, and then you would pour just a clear so it's a two-step um, same as any like if you're going to be putting your white pigment paste on and then blowing it to make uh, lacing or sea foam it's so that's also a two-step so put the sand down first the dark the lighter the lightest let it set probably cut some of this off in the shape that you want it to follow the sand because you don't want the bubbles all the way over the sand do you no so anyway that's going to be coming up so um i'm just going to put you on pause for a minute i'm going to mix up some resin and i'm going to pour in these two and then once i've got a set of four we will go ahead and do the next step Right, so I've mixed up a little bit of resin. Um, I'm about an ounce. Just over an ounce. Don't need much. It's this one, the Platinum 360 Plus. And I'm going to put some white in it, some white paste. I personally think the paste is better because, well, for me, I don't want it to be sort of glossy and shimmery like a mica powder I just want it to be white but um, oh actually I'll show you something I've also got a bigger one that I've made I haven't actually poured in it yet look at that isn't it gorgeous <laughs> bigger bubbles um, like you don't this one I made to fit my 40 centimeter round tray you know I've got a uh, not 40 centimeter 24 I've got a 20 a 22 and a 24 centimeter tray this is this fits the 24 centimeter tray but um, I was thinking how good would this look if you did like maybe a black background and poured metallic gold into this and then put that onto a black background and made it into a clock so it doesn't have to be sea foam maybe just gorgeous lacing um, you know how you try and get that gold lacing for resin it could be gold lacing and I thought I think that would look really really stunning as a clock but anyway that's that's another project I've got so many things I want to do right let's get some white paste I used this in these two so I'm going to use the same you know just in case whites are different I just clean that off a little bit you never know maybe the whites are different different brands so I'm just going to use the same just take a little scoop don't need a lot there's not a lot of resin in there that one's just called pure white by Lorez now see this little thingy here it's really handy to have one of those it really is Oops, I'm on a bit of a bump there underneath a, a crease I'll have to move over a bit here we go oh no it's still there um, I've just got these on a piece of paper towel and you'll see why in a minute 
it's just easier for cleanup but again you don't have to for me it's just easier to clean up if um, I can just take all my resin spills onto this bit of paper towel and then just throw them out but you could potentially let it just roll over the edges and then when it's dry pick it off you could do that as well so whatever floats your boat <laughs> whatever you want to do <laughs> Uh, all right, I think that's mixed in. You just have to make sure that it's mixed in really well. Now, the other thing you want to do, especially because it's an intricate mold, and I've been doing this with all my sort of intricate molds, is to spray 100% alcohol, I've got it in here, in a mister, onto this because it'll really, really help your um, bubbles not appear. I think that's it. Make sure you're sitting on a nice flat surface. All right, let's do this one first. So I'm going to spray. Try and get the alcohol in there as best as possible. Now, you just want, first of all, you just want to pour a little bit of that on. And then you're going to use this little silicone brushy thing. I have no idea what it's called. <laughs> and we're just going to push that white resin to the edges and I only want to do a little thin bit first a little bit of resin first because I want to make sure that I'm going to get into all those little spaces between the bubbles it's not difficult to do we just want to spread the resin out okay need a tiny bit more so that we've got a thin layer first because if you go and pour a lot on you're not going to see whether or not the resin's actually gone into the little creases into the little lines between the bubbles so just start with pouring a little bit on first and then you use your little silicone spatula thing it's still sitting up there's a, there's a crease just there oh, I'm gonna have to move over moving over Actually, let's just move you out of the way for a minute. And then I'll put you, I'll put one on each side. There we go, because there's a, a bend in the center. Are we still in frame? Oh yeah, pretty good. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna do that for a, a minute. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick this up. I'm just gonna drop it, just to help the resin fall into those little creases, alright? So that one can just stay there for a minute. We'll do the same with this one. Pour a bit on. And this is the one that I haven't cleaned off. It's still got the little old bumps of resin from the last one, but I don't think it's going to matter because we're not interested in those top little rounds we're only interested in the little channels between those bubbles so it doesn't matter about the tops of those bubbles just push that all to the edge there a little bit more and I just go up and over the edge like that over the top and clean it off later Okay, now I'm going to drop this one from a bit of a height. And that just helps the resin fall into those channels, hey? Like that. All right, now that that's done, um, we'll see if we need any more. So this is where I just bring that across and wipe that clean. Bring it across, wipe it clean. Bring it across, wipe it clean, and you should be able to see if there's any. See that little, little tiny area there? I don't know if you can see from up there. It needs a little bit of resin in there. We'll just pop that in there. Let me give it another little whack. Don't torch these guys. It's. I don't think you need to torch them. The the resin's way too close to the silicone and you'll just end up melting your silicone mold so just don't do it if you if you want to you can um, after you've finished 
getting all that excess resin off not that there's a lot but once you've got it all off like that you can give it a bit of a spray but you can actually literally see if there's any areas that need some resin and then this one again just pushing it all in clean it off now this is when we're going to start just taking off the excess if you don't take off the excess you'll find that when you unmold it um, once you've unmolded it if you haven't taken off the excess it'll have a skin on the back and then you'll have to cut all the skin off so make sure that you get it nice and clean on top if you know what I mean otherwise you'll be frustrated and you'll have to cut all that backing off you guys know what I mean don't you clean it off like so all right I think we're good actually I could just pick that up couldn't I like so all right um that is pretty good now the last thing I want to do is just with a little bit of just a baby wipe with a little bit of alcohol on there I'm just gonna clean my mold just around the edges there don't be tempted to try and clean the tops because all you're going to do is the resin that's in between the bubbles it's going to also stick to this and then you're going to have to put more resin in to fill them so just leave them the little bubbles on top just leave them I did that before I I got a piece of paper towel and I wiped over the top <laughs> to clean them and um, then I found that I'd emptied all my little channels I if I could try it again maybe I think all I'm doing is just emptying my channels though making a mess but look once you've got this mold if you want it you can try different things with it see what works for you it wasn't too bad I guess but I've still got silicone or oh, resin over the top I hope I'm not taking too long here now I have to tidy that up I'm just going to bring you down for a close-up so that you can see what that looks like oops my battery must be running low I've lost my light <laughs> my battery must be really low all right let's get this done real quick before um, my battery dies so this is the one that had the bubbles on it previously there are little bits of resin stuck onto the top there you go all right I better go and charge my phone and uh, once these are set I will demold them and put them into my four round coaster mold and we'll do a beautiful beach scene with sea foam yay <laughs> see you soon all right guys I'm back I'm gonna demold this one I demolded that one yesterday I forgot that I was supposed to wait for you so I've got that one and of course these two have already been trimmed up so this one needs trimming and this one needs unmolding so let's unmold it come up around behind here all right are you ready let's do this I love the crunching noise it makes just go around and loosen it doesn't the mold look weird with all the little dots of resin on top of it there we go tiny little bit of overflow or little bits they're easy to take off you can just push through with a little toothpick or something just to get those off actually I shouldn't do it over my mold should I and there it is all right let's put you back on regular focus move that out of the way um, yeah so if you've got any little bits like I said that are sticking to it that are sort of from the top just you can just sort of poke them with a toothpick just to loosen them get rid of them 
They're just bits that were hanging like in like, you know, a bit of overflow. So they come off really easily. They're very thin little pieces. I think that's it. I think that's all of them. Oops, no, I missed a couple. I think that's it. All right, so now I just need to trim these two up. And where's my scissors? And then I will make up my resin. And we'll get started. I've got some sand already in my little cup there. I'm going to just put a little bit of resin in that. Normally when I make sand, um, I put quite a lot of resin in it and it's sort of quite runny. But today I'm just going to put a little bit of resin into it. Um, and just make it like quite a thick paste and, and see how we go with that. So I'm just trying to think. I've been thinking about how I'm going to do this because... When you put that in, um, I'm going to sort of cut, I'll put the sand in first and then I'll kind of cut the bottom off to fit the sand. But then I don't want to see the edges so I may have to come back and put a little bit of sand just over the edges um, to disguise it or you can possibly put some little shells or things like that on it. So I'm just going to cut this one out as well. Uh, I'm going to mix up my resin. And then I'll come back to you. This is quite fun to do this. <laughs> a lot of fun. All right, I'll come back to that when I've mixed up my resin and uh, we'll do the next step. So this particular mould holds about 350 grams. So I divided that by two. And then this is what I've got. So half for the first layer and then half for the top clear layer. So I'm using the Platinum 360 Plus and I've got 125 grams of A and 55 grams of B. So I've got 180 grams. So 18 and 18 is 36. So I should have plenty and I'd rather have a little bit left over. Rightio, where to begin, where to begin. Now I'm going to use the Let's Resin inks. I've got Sapphire Blue. That's going to be my dark. Is that going to be my dark? Hmm, it might go midnight blue. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see. I have this little colour chart here that I've made. So sky is going to be my pale one next to the sand. And then I thought I'd go with azure, or azure, or whatever you want to pronounce it, that one there. And then sapphire is this one. But I might do that one, the darker one, or a mixture of the two. I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll see. It's handy to have. So you can see what your colours are going to look like. Although sometimes they do tend to look a little bit different when you put them in resin. Right, let's start with some sand here. Pour a little bit of resin in that one. And then I'm going to go... It's probably about a third of a cup. Third of a cup. Third of a cup. Alright, so I'm just going to divide this equally. Make sure I've got enough to go around of all my colours and also a clear one. And then I might need some more in the sand. So we'll just let that sit over there for a minute. We're over there. And mix this up. So basically I just want to have this as a paste. Crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> I think I'll put a bit more resin in that. so it's easy to smooth out if it's too thick and chunky it's not going to smooth out nicely is it and I need it to smooth out so I'll just add a little bit at a time till I get the consistency I need <laughs> look at that that's weird I probably got way too much sand there As I poured it into my cup, I've gone one, two, three, four, because I've got four coaster cavities. I actually bought this sand online. It's just sand, nothing special. I've got some shells and some starfish and things there. We'll see how that goes. This is not a very deep mold. I do have a deeper one. Um, but I think if you're gonna put really thick, sort of deep things in, you wanna go for the deeper coaster mold. 
this one's not that deep it's six millimeters deep my other one's almost double ten millimeters deep so if you want to put big shells and things like that in it go with the deeper one okay how's that let's start let's just put a little bit in two little scoops of each now, I don't want a straight across line I just want to kind of make it natural looking but um, yeah it's going to be careful not to make it too deep like thick otherwise my other layers aren't going to be able to fit on there properly if I make the sand layer too too thick this is going to take me a little while so I might just put you on pause while I fiddle with the sand see that's a nice little shape how's that oh, I'll just keep you going you can fast forward I always worry about you guys sitting there going oh hurry up Julie you can fast forward. I'll just keep going. Well, Christmas is over and my husband's just left to go back to work. He'll be gone for another two weeks. And Christy, my daughter, she'll be heading off shortly as well to go back down to Brisbane. And then I'll be all alone again. All alone. Except for you guys. You guys are my company when everyone leaves me. <laughs> Let's put that down there like that and have that kind of a organic sort of a shape because we don't want to go straight across, do we? So I kind of like one third sand, two thirds water. But that's up to you, you know, you do whatever you like. I've still got heaps of sand left over. I didn't need all that sand. can't really do much with a container of sandy resin or is it resiny sand so once I've done this I'll put a little bit of clear next to the sand because I don't want my blue going over the top of the sand Gonna make another little bump there I think that looks quite organic what do you reckon yeah looks okay <laughs> all right so plenty of sand left all right now I'm gonna have to mix up my colors uh, I'm gonna just go go slow that's gonna be my clear I might divide these up. And more of the lighter one. Less of the less of the darker one. Might as well put all these in my cups, then I know what I've got to play with. So that's all of it gone. I did waste a little bit in that sand there, but it can't be helped. Alright. Oh, there's a bubble. little burst of heat all right um, now this is sky blue and again we'll just start slowly I should leave the lid off start slowly because the colors can be really really strong so don't go around putting three drops in and then you know it's too dark I really do like this sky it's kind of got a bit of an aqua hint to it now, and I've shown you before how to test your colour. Just get a piece of paper towel and just put a little bit on there. And that's the colour you're going to have because it's deeper in there. So if you're happy with that, leave it like that. I may do a little bit more, we'll see. And then this one is the Azure. Oh, this is the one I always struggle with, isn't it? Oh, now I've got it all over me. How can I get it all over me and it, I can't even get it out? Oh, look, there's one drop. Oh, I don't know. 
I always think I must fix that and then I forget about it and then I come back to use it again and can't get it out. Okay. Um, let's do this one. I might do a bit of a shake. I don't know if you have to shake them or not, but I shake them. All right, let's do one drop of mid... Oh, gosh. <laughs> one drop of midnight. That looks Actually, that looks like a nice colour, doesn't it? I didn't want it to be too, too bright. Okay, I think that's going to be sufficient. One drop of midnight. That looks like a nice colour. We'll move the sapphire blue away. So that's the midnight. So now I just need... This one. Come on, Azua. All right, I'm going to have to take the little nib thing off. Oh, gosh. Maybe I'll just change to a different colour. <laughs> what else have I got? Um, let me have a look. What else have I got? I've got um, Cerulean, which is, I think, more of a... It's more of a green. Mm, no, I don't know. Hang on. I'm going to have to try and get that out of there because I want that colour. Hang on one sec. Let's see if I can put you on pause. That worked. I just got a pin and pushed it down there. And I got one drop out. It's a very bright blue. Ugh, I don't know that I like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's very bright. I might pop a drop of cerulean in there just to turn it down a bit. Sometimes you do have to just, you know, add a couple of different colours depending on what you want. Now I'm going to put one more drop of this sky blue in. Actually, no, I won't. I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of this. And then we got that one. And then we got this one. These are very, these are two are quite similar. I'm going to put one more drop of the midnight blue in. So I feel it can be a little bit darker. There we go. So midnight blue mixture of sapphire and cerulean in the middle one and then the sky blue on the bottom all right let's have a look and see what those look like together it takes a little bit of time to just get your colors sorted but i think it's important you don't want to go ahead and do the whole thing and then you know it's you've got wrong colors and you're not happy with them there we go, how's that? I think that looks pretty. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. All right, he's cleaning off my mixing stick. Oops. All righty. So, oh look, they've got a little collection of bubbles in the sand. Spray them. There, gone skis. All righty. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to put a little bit of clear just to separate my pale blue from the sand. If you don't do this, you'll find that the blue will go right over the top of your sand and uh, you don't want that. So, a little bit of clear there just to separate them. The blue will kind of want to move across anyway, which is okay, but I want to try and Keep it off the sand. All right, that's all my clear gone. All right, here we go. And I might not even use this, all of it. Let's see how we go. The colours will move and spread. So I'll just put a little bit of each on. I'll keep a bit in case I need more all right and then the next one actually i might put the darker one in first and then i can just fill in the middle with the middle color so 
but depending on what look you want you may you know I've done a little bit less of the dark a bit more of the medium and then most of the light blue so but that's just how I wanted it so that's my dark all right here we go and I'm going to pour this one this is my medium one pour that through the center of those two hopefully I've got enough to go around a little bit more Oi, you you've been a bit of a bully you've pushed in now like I said I don't want to have these too full I need enough room for um, the next layer the top layer and also for the sea foam to go on to this one had the least amount <laughs> it just got the leftovers all right um, let's put a little bit more of this light one probably put a little bit too much clear in hey <laughs> oh, I don't want a clear strip between my sand and my water I do want a strip but not a huge strip I can just I can blend those it's not a problem all right let's use all this up now I am going to wait until my resin is tacky before I go and put the sea foam on because you can imagine if I had to put the sea foam on now it would just sink and then all your color will go over the top of of the white and you don't want that do you nope so I'm gonna baby wipe and clean my hands clean up my drips oh what's that There's something in there what is that oh, a bit of glitter from the other day <laughs> a bit of glitter all right so I've got a little bit of the darkest blue left I might as well use it just a little bit my mold's still got plenty of room in it I do like these colors together I think I chose well in the end after the struggle I had oops I dripped okay so sometimes it's nice to kind of blend them um, other times you may not want to blend them but I do want some color down here next to my sand like I said I probably put too much clear in just gonna try and blend them a little bit just so they don't look too separated and the resin will blend anyway but I just want to get try and get rid of those lines that you can see there Once you've got the sea foam on as well, it'll cover up a lot of those those lines. It'll look more natural. So just blend that a little bit. Uh, the resin will keep moving and changing and doing all that. Just be careful, I think, not to blend it too too much. Otherwise, you're going to lose your dark, medium, and light that you've just tried to to create I find I fiddle too much all right let's give it a torch as always be really careful with the heat because you can burn your resin and you can burn your mold and or fused your mold will fuse to the resin you won't better get it out all right now now that's looking really pretty I like that 
definitely got the lightest to the darkest so really really pretty okay I'm gonna do um, it's a pity I can't keep this sand what a shame I can't keep this because once I put this in once I've cut my section out and don't throw that piece away you can keep it and use it for something else maybe you're doing a little smaller coaster and you can keep that little piece um, so once I've put that in I need to cover up the edges with sand and I think I won't be able to like poke it in otherwise it'll be on an angle so I'll have to make up a tiny little bit more resin just to put around the the edge just to disguise the edge so anyway it's a shame I can't reuse that but never mind um okay actually I might take my gloves off now just throw these away take my gloves off and I'm gonna find some little shells and things to go in yeah that'll be pretty so I've got some these I think are quite nice because they're quite they're quite sort of flat. These ones, unless you sort of dip, like sink them into your sand, they might stick out of the top once you put your top coat on, and I don't want that. Now I know. Oh, actually, see see how you can see the the lines underneath. That's actually the bottom of the starfish. And that's the top. I actually like them that way <laughs> so I'm gonna do it that way because I like it that way and also the feet are like curved up so I'm just gonna do it that way I'm gonna put one in each well, that one's a bit broken we won't use that one these are the smallest ones I could find I'm just going to use the end of my little stick here just to just to kind of push them down into that sand a little bit and that'll help stick them down so they don't float away oh you're you're oh gosh I've done you wrong well I've done you right but I've done you wrong there we go he's all right I just think it's more interesting to see that side so just push him in you don't want to cover him all with the sand and he will get covered later on when we do our top coat so don't be too concerned right so one of each of those let's put these back I don't know why I've got such big shells in there they're too big uh, I think I just got these on Amazon or eBay or something like that it's where I usually shop all right I'm just gonna open this one I haven't even opened it yet it's got sand everywhere. I'm just going to open it over here away from my mould in case I get sand all over it. Let's just put a few over here and see what they look like. So obviously when you buy a packet of these it's going to have a lot of broken bits in it, isn't it? Um, now I guess the problem with these is if you put them that way they're going to have an air bubble underneath. So we may actually have to put you either leave them up like that or you put some resin on the inside and then soak them down. Hey, maybe I'll just do it this way. Then I don't have to worry about it. Mm, no, that looks silly. That looks silly. Okay, um, here's a really cute little one. Now I need a tiny bit of resin left over. Actually, I wonder if I can... Mm, there's a tiny bit sort of floating on top there. Actually, I could fill them up with sand, couldn't I? There's no reason why I couldn't do that. Yes! <gasps> Let's do that. Okay, now I need some more gloves. All right, yeah, I could do that. I just put a little tiny bit of sand in each because it's got resin in it. Yeah, that'll work. Yes! Okay. It's going to be a bit fiddly to do, though. Do that and then place you down. There we go. Look at me go. Oh, I'm not as dumb as I think sometimes. Because last time I did um, a beach scene, I I got a lot of sand inside. Whoa, all my my pieces. They're all over. There you go. 
oh, this is working. I'm just trying to pick the small ones, that's all. There's a little one. And then I am also going to put, um, I might do a couple of these ones. It's a bit tricky. Oh gosh, tweezers would be helpful. And there you are, another little tiny one. You're very cute. But yeah, tweezers would be useful. Doesn't matter if they fall over, they're going to get resin on the top of them anyway. Just make sure that when you do put your top coat on that um, they will be submerged. So I didn't use much of that at all. All right, uh, now I wonder, what, I wonder if these will be... See, these are the ones I had trouble with last time. Yeah, I don't think I'll bother. I might put a couple more of these little ones on. Um, so I'll do that. I'm going to put a couple more shells on. And um, then I'll come back to you... When it's when it's tacky and we'll put the sea foam on so it's been a couple of hours and uh, the resin I just stuck a little stick in it you see it's making like this long thread it's sticky so I'm gonna I'm gonna place them on and just see what happens I, I don't think it's sort of thin enough that these are going to fall through but I do want them a little bit sticky I'm, I'm hoping I'm, maybe I can push the sand over the top we'll see now what I did with this one I was just having a little practice I'll see if that can sit on there push that in oh look it's working <gasps> yay push that down have to make sure that I leave enough room for my top coat. All right, that seems to be working. But now see how it's over the top of the sand? So this is why I was saying to you, I may have to sort of pour a little bit more sand. I don't think I'm going to be able to push the sand over because it's it's already sticky now. So unless um, maybe you guys have got that I can push on it maybe you guys have got a, a, a solution those of you that do beach pours a lot what you do here I um I found this I had these this little bag of like coral and I put a couple of little pieces of coral in see there's little long ones here that kind of look like worms <laughs> bits of coral so I've done that um I don't know Know whether I need to cover up that edge or not or maybe I need to cut it back a little bit not this particular one because it's stuck down now and try and mimic that I'm not sure like if I do put actually I wonder what it would look like if I just sort of sprinkled some dry sand on there I wonder what that would look like and then when I put my clear resin over the top I wonder if I wonder if it'll work like I don't want to ruin it but I want to see what might happen not quite sure what it's going to do hmm I don't know Maybe I need to maybe I need to wait until I've got the clear resin on and then do that. Not sure. Either way, I guess. I guess either way will work. I just don't want to see that defined edge. I don't know. <laughs> I think this one I'll cut right on that. So what I did was I, I lay that like that. I just had a practice so that I could sort of look as if I was knowing what I was doing to you guys, even though I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Learning as I go. Let's get all this out of the way. So what I did was just hold it above, rest my finger on here so that it's this um, lacing is not touching the resin. And then looking straight down at it, I just sort of marked this 
where my sand was because you can see where the sand is like so yep so that's what I did and now I'm going to cut it along that line that I just made if you've got any black marker on your white um, don't worry too much you can just you can just wipe it off like I mean obviously you don't want to put it in there like that because you can still see the little bits of black you can just get a little baby wipe with a touch of alcohol on it and just wipe that marker off if you've got any on there like so easy enough to do all right let's see how this one's going to go hopefully I've cut it in the right spot yeah look at that I did it so that one's probably better cutting it right on the the sand whereas this one I cut forward but if I'm going to put more sand on it I don't want to be sort of bringing it too far down but like I said you guys tell me what you reckon look at that oh, it looks so pretty now when I pour my clear resin over the top of this that sand may move I may be better pouring the clear on and then putting the sand on after that not sure we'll see anyway I'm going to cut the other two I've got those little bits left over like I said don't throw them away maybe you can use them if you're doing just a small piece oh there's a bit of glitter in there never mind all right let's do this one it was easy enough to do wasn't it just hold it there above where it's going to go you can see the sand through there just mark it roughly where you want it to go beautiful easy peasy lemon squeezy and these are easy to cut and down and back up yeah because I've got a bit of a bump there haven't I <laughs> down and up all right there's that one now where's my baby wipe gone where did I put you baby wipe did I put you away I might have put you away I just want to wipe that I might have if I spray it with alcohol give it a bit of a spray oops a bit more marker off if I was intelligent I would um, mark a little bit lower and then cut above the marker so that would work <laughs> wouldn't it that would probably be a better idea oh my god this is looking so amazing oh, I love it 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 get in there in you go so it's working really well sitting just doing it when it's tacky because it fits it just sort of sticks in there really nicely don't push down too hard because then it, the color might ooze through the holes and you don't want that either you wanted the 3d look oops stuck my finger in there didn't mean to I can just melt it again <laughs> I was a bit off a bit off center there okay Alrighty. Oh, this is exciting. Oh my gosh. It's looking so pretty. So pretty. All right. Last one. Last one. Here we go. Now I'll try and do what I said I should do and mark a little bit lower. I'll mark just below the sand level. Whoops. Stuck my head, <laughs> stuck it into the resin. And then um, I can cut above the line, eh? Hey? okay let's see if that works and then I don't have to worry about cleaning the marker off if I just cut above the marker what do you
you guys think? Do you like it? Do you like my new mold? Look, I know it's it's more expensive than those, you know, that other one I showed you. I know that. But um, it was it was a really difficult master mold to make. Now this one. I guess manufactured, bulk manufactured, it's only small. This master mould, it was a difficult mould to make. Um, and then pouring the silicone in is also difficult, trying to get the silicone to go into all the little holes. So, yeah, I'm not trying to reason my the expense, but that's why. <laughs> so I guess it's up to you guys if you want to buy it or not totally up to you I'm not forcing anyone I'm just saying it's gorgeous and I love it but it was difficult to make <laughs> oh my gosh look at that now do you like them like that or do you like them with the sand I'm gonna mix up a bit of resin now and what I'll do is I'll pour a little bit of resin onto this one and see what happens um, I'm just worried that the sand may just all kind of flow over the shells and I didn't want that. I did cut this one lower down like into the sand a little bit more and I can't really pick it up and trim it now it's too late and then I'll pour some resin on this one and then just sort of sprinkle the sand over and see what happens. Uh, because the sand's heavier it should sink and then my clear top will just sort of float over the top so that's what I'm going to try and do. So. I'm going to mix up some more resin and I will be right back. So I made up another half a cup of resin. Um, when I'm looking at it, I'm thinking that's way, way too much. But um, I may do like a little 3D flour or something with the leftover resin. We'll see. Or I can, oh, maybe I can pour it into this one. I haven't done this one yet. Pour it into that one. I'm going to do gold in that one. Definitely want to do that. Anyway, let's get back to this. I'm just going to pour a bit in here because it's difficult to pour correctly out of something that's really full. Now, I just want to pour a little bit onto this sand and just see what it's going to do. Is it going to stay where it is? Is it going to move? Because if it's going to go over the top of my shells, then that's not ideal. I'll probably play around with it a little bit once it's once I've got all my resin in there I can play around with it a bit all right that seems to be working now what I want to do is because you know how bubbles like to cling to the sides of things I'm just going to spray that with some alcohol and then I can pour this in Oh, look at all the bubbles. Oh my gosh, I've got bubbles in bubbles. I guess that doesn't matter, does it? It's probably actually a good thing. <laughs> that looks so cool. I might even just leave them there. Bubbles inside bubbles. Um, what am I doing? Spreading the resin. Yeah, I might leave that. We'll see. They may just come up and pop on their own. Probably needed a little bit more alcohol, actually. <laughs> on those before I poured the resin on because resin does like to cling to the sides of things that's for sure alrighty yeah I don't know you guys I don't know whether I should just leave those little bubbles in there I don't know they do look pretty cool. They may just come up and pop on their own anyway. Just getting rid of these ones that are in the sand. Okay, so the sand's kind of moved a little bit. But this one here, I can actually see underneath. Like I can see gap between the sand and the sea foam. So I, I don't like that look, so I will have to... Put some sand there 
I think I think what I'll do, let's try, oops, forgot the spray. Let's try and pour the resin straight onto this one. Put more alcohol on it, <laughs> see if that'll help. Um, and then I will move the sand in afterwards. so cool with all the extra bubbles I've just made. I've made bubbles all just magically made more bubbles. That's so cool. Okay so that's that way. Um, now let's see what the what it looks like if I can just sort of spoon on some sand now where I want it to go. Just over that edge there but the problem is I need it all to sink all right we'll just have to wait so I'm not sure whether this is the best option or this is the best option because now I have to poke all the sand down so probably the other option is better <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. So now I've still got sand on the top, which I'm going to have to cover with more resin. Just put a tiny bit on because I don't want to push it all off again. Okay. That looks better than that. The sand's all fallen through here. Maybe it needs more. At the moment, this one looks better, but... I'll have to see what happens. I mean, that sand may still sink. So I've done it both ways. Sand before and sand after. I think I'll do this one this way. Yeah, I do like that better. So far, anyway. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oops, spray. Definitely has helped. This one's got less bubbles. But if you like having more bubbles in your bubbles... Don't spray with alcohol. I'm going to do this one as well. I want to make sure I've got enough resin to go around. And here was I thinking I would have leftovers. Uh-uh. I'm not going to have any leftovers. I'll just keep a tiny bit of resin just to see if I'm, which one's going to need a little bit more. It's deceiving. I made up like that whole, that was full, that cup. Right, now I've got to be careful I don't stick my hand in that one as I sprinkle sand across here. Just along the edge. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to go all the way around. I don't want to drop any sand where sand's not supposed to be. At this stage, if you want to change your shape, of your little sandbar. It's a good opportunity to do it because you're adding more. So you can change the shape. That needs a little bit more. This one definitely needs more. See, I can see the what of that sea foam disc sitting over the top of the sand. So I just need to cover the edge there. All right, let's see how that's going to look. Oh, I've got some more clear in here. I forgot about it. Pour a tiny bit on there just to cover it without moving it too far. All right, that seems to be working well. If I put the resin here, it'll push the sand back, won't it? Yep. <laughs> Pushes the sand back. Of course it does. And then I can just have a little fiddle with it and, and push the sand where I want it to go if it's settled where I don't want it to be. 
this one needs just a tiny bit more actually I don't want to scrape the inside of that because I don't want to get the wax from the inside of the cup onto the surface of my coaster so let's just give that a torch all right so this one's still not quite where I want the sand to be Probably put a little bit more sand. Actually, no, I'll just look, I'll just push the sand into the edges there. That should work. Because I don't really want to put any more sand on there. I'll just push it into those edges. May have to put a little bit more on. Because the sand's kind of run underneath the disc. That's looking so pretty. Where'd my spoon go? needs a little bit more see I, I did a very light sprinkling because I didn't want to overdo it so now I just put a little bit more on because the other sand is sunk now so it's just a matter of building it up actually until you're happy with the result let's go slow This corner is fine, it doesn't need any more, but that's that needs a little bit more there. Um, and it will sink, so just give it some time to sink. I want to actually bring you down though, and I want to show you the difference that it makes with you spraying your mould, or spraying with alcohol first, as to not spraying with alcohol. So I want to show you that while I let the resin just settle a little bit. I think it's quite important to see the difference because I always say to you spray the mold first and you won't get bubbles so you can see what I mean now I mean these look really quite cute so you could leave them in there if you wanted to see the bubbles bubbles inside bubbles so it does look cute but then come over here and look at this one where I've sprayed it's only a couple of bubbles and I'll, I can just pop those with a toothpick. Or you could just leave them. So same with this one. There's a couple up there in the top left. Uh, and the same with this one. There's a couple there. But ne not nearly as many as this one, which I did not really spray. I think I gave it one little light spray. Not enough, though. So that's what they look like at the moment. Um, I won't bore you while I just sort of play a little bit more. I just want to cover, see I don't want to see the edges. That one's good, it's all covered. See that little edge there sticking up? I want to cover that, see that, that bit there? I don't want that showing. So I'll fix that. The rest of it's good. How about you? Uh, yep, yep, oh, there's a tiny bit there that needs covering. And then in this one, a little bit there needs covering. So not much, I'll just do that. And then, guess what? We can unmold them. Don't they look amazing? So happy. Now, at this stage, if you wanted to, if you've got like a little bit of blank space there, you could put another starfish in or another shell or something. And that'll just sort of sit down into your clear top coat. So you can always do that if you decide you want to add more. All right. Oh, I'm so excited. This is working out so much better than I expected. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow when this is set up. Hey guys, I'm back. It's the next day. Oh my gosh, am I excited or what? I do get excited with reveals, but this, I think this is just amazing. I think these are the most beautiful things I've ever created. What do you think? I think so. A couple of little bits of resin that's gone over the top. Oh, and look, we've got the transparency as well. How pretty is that? I might have to get a tile to put them down on so that you can see them. Otherwise, he's looking over the top of something else. Hey, a little bit of overflow there. Let me just get a tile to put them on. I just want to sand off this little tiny bit here that's annoying me.
to be really careful when you're sanding. You don't want to scratch the top. You've just gone to all that trouble to make a gorgeous, smooth top. Looks like a little bit of overflow there as well. Look at that, just a teensy little bit. Teensy little bit. Let's use a nail file. If you have to do a huge amount, you can use your Dremel. I didn't realize I had so much overflow. I tried to make them as full as possible, but probably didn't need to make them quite that full. All right, now that that's over, put that there. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? What do you think, you guys? Now, this was the one where I only gave it one quick spray of the alcohol, so it's got more in the way of bubbles. Um, I did end up popping a few of them, but uh, they, they don't bother me. Like, you know, I think they maybe add to the character of it. Bubbles inside bubbles. And you can actually see, I don't, I don't know if you can see at the moment, but the bubbles are casting shadows. So it looks really 3D. Like in there. Can you see just in there? the light shining on them. I don't know if you can see it as well as I can. Oh, there we go. Lift it up a little bit. So, yeah, it looks so cool. The light shining on it. You can see that real 3D effect. And there's my shells and my... Oh, it would help if I'm on the right focus. There's my shells and my little starfish. There we go. Look at that one. All right, let's get the next one out. They're all going to be the same, aren't they? The only difference is really is the um, the sand shape. It's in a slightly, each one's got a slightly different little shape. More little overflow there. I guess I can do that later, hey? I can do that later. It's not a bit down the bottom. A little bit of overflow just there. Again, you can see the, the shadows from the, the bubbles. So you can see how I've sort of covered in the edge there, just so that it doesn't look so edgy. <laughs> now, the, when I was designing these, I was thinking, do we want that rim left on? You know how I cut the rim off all the way around? I was contemplating leaving it on but now that I see it the bubbles just coming up to the edge there I think that looks better doesn't it what do you think or do you think it would have been better with the white rim all the way around I don't think so actually because then the white rim would stop here that would be have no rim and then this would all have a white rim around it so I designed it that you would cut the rim off and then it would fit exactly into my mold and it does fit exactly and I'm so happy with it oh, that was a lot of work designing, organizing, <laughs> trying to get that mold made. All right, tiny little bit of overflow again. There's the other one. You can see the little piece of coral in there. There's a couple of little pieces of coral in there. And I ended up putting these little shells in as well. Here's a nice close-up for you and look at the shadowing. So pretty. These ones have got way, way less bubbles. Not my bubbles. <laughs> Resin bubbles in them. A couple of tiny, tiny little ones in there, but you can hardly see them. All right, I'm going to go around. Let me have a mouthful of my coffee. I'll go around the other side. Uh, mm. Take the other one out. Okay, there we go. That way I'm not stretching over in front of you, that's all. Now, do you guys have any other ideas um, of what you could do with this particular mould? Apart from what I said, you know, painting, actually putting gold into it. I mean, you can do that with coasters too. And then you don't have to actually cut anything out. You could just have this, oh yeah, have just a totally um, covered 
bubbles or sea foam but in gold and then you could have whatever color background you wanted to wouldn't that be pretty because you don't have to have them just as sea foam you can just put whatever you want on them you might turn them into whatever you like but um, yeah comment below tell me what else you would do with this particular mold um, and maybe what color schemes you would use love it I'm so happy with the way it turned out so I've got a tiny bit of sanding to do um, but I'll set them up outside in the sun for you so you can see them finished oh I'm so excited so happy that they've worked all right thanks again for watching hope you've enjoyed this video and um, I'll have this mold up real soon in my store okay I just have to make some for you <laughs> all right thanks again for watching bye for now